clearing room, everybody. The 720 gallon tank is filled and it is looking good. I hope, again, everyone loved the reveal of this tank. I can't express just how awesome it is to actually be able to look at this tank, see water in it, look at the 480 gallon tank and see water in it, but not only that, but this beautiful aquascape here. I, I just love it. And today we're going to talk a bit about it. I am going to do it a little different than last time though because I didn't know how, how much cloudiness I was going to get in the tanks. It's actually not looking too bad right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you guys back in time to before the tank was filled and talk about this aquascape just a little bit more so that everyone can see just how it looks and have a little bit of a discussion about why I did the aquascape the way I did. So enjoy. This tank here is three feet tall. The tank's four foot deep, eight feet long. So there's a pretty massive rock structure going on in here. The big shelf piece I revealed a while back is in the center and out there kind of in its glory to make a beautiful shelf piece that's just a nice big flat top. I'll explain a little bit more why I didn't do anything more elaborate with it. I made a huge complex cave structure over here and then on this end here I got a canyon going on. Let me go ahead and zoom into each one of these structures, talk about them a little bit individually. I'll go ahead and start on the far left side of the tank here. Now a good chunk of the rock in here of course there's a mix of Pucani, uh, reef cleaners rock is the majority of what's in here and then there's also that big giant shelf piece that's in the middle. And I want to explain a little bit about each one of these structures, kind of why I made them. There's a kind of some purpose behind them like everything else. One with this tank, I've always seen a lot of things in nature and in different reefs and I really wanted to kind of highlight a few of those things that I like, but I couldn't really do it before because simply put, I just didn't have the space. But now in this tank, I have the space. I've always liked seeing like slot canyons and stuff in reefs where, you know, divers are going in, you see fish kind of going up and down a canyon. You know, I can't make anything really giant with that, but I thought I could make a really cool effect with a cave, provide lots of swim through cover on the sides of it, and also straight through and behind. Let me zoom in just a bit. You can see on this side here it does it's not completely vertical it's got a bit of a lean to it which I wanted and it kind of curves around because you can't really see the back of it all that well and then it empties out into the back now I integrated this large piece of Pucani in here and then I basically stacked up a ton of reef cleaners rock I did it all on the floor originally and with that I ended up using Stone Fix from Aqua Forest as a cement, which I have to say for using it for the first time, I was pretty satisfied with the product. It was easy to use, easy to mix up, and there's not a lot of working time with it. You have to be quick, and by the time I kind of finished up doing a bunch of it and turned around and touched some of it, it you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, it was already pretty hard. So that big canyon is one of the first big rock structures I want, and I kind of even have a bit of a skylight effect in it too. I think that structure turned out good. I didn't make it all the way to the top of the tank. I'll explain why here shortly. Pan on down, we'll just go right down the line here. So the giant shelf piece. Now I know from this angle it doesn't really look all that impressive. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll kind of take the camera off here in a second. But when I got that shelf piece, I really wanted to kind of showcase it in the center of the tank. By showcasing it in the center of the tank, the best way I felt to do that was to keep it simple. So I thought I was going to have a lot more difficulty building a base for it to stand on. But actually, it only took a handful of rocks and I was able to put it in there. It was actually the last piece of aquascape that went inside this tank because I had to be standing in it while I did it. And frankly, there's just not a ton of room to maneuver around. And I wanted to keep a nice open aquascape in a lot of this as well. 
you can see there's there's some big open areas up front I did that intentionally I want to have a lot of good swimming space I don't want it to be just one giant rock face so when you sit in a chair and look at it you could see it's got a massive overhang on it at least a foot of this shelf is overhanging and it just looks really nice it kind of looks like a spaceship almost hovering here same thing on this side it's got a nice overhang I didn't keep it flat I wanted to give it a little bit of an angle going outward and just have it kind of project into the tank here so it's kind of hopping out right at you now the final giant piece of this aquascape here was this massive rock pile of caves now I had a real vision in mind when I was starting this aquascape and one of the things I've always thought was cool is I've always seen pictures of people on reefs and, and they'll be around a cave and you see that kind of shaft of light coming through the cave and hitting the bottom. Well, I, I wanted to try and recreate that a little bit. So that's not just simply a, a pile of rocks with a cave in it. There's multiple pass-throughs and swim-throughs in every which way and there's even like kind of a second level of caves up here. And I even brought them out to the side more and curved them around. And there's not a ton of rock in the back. I kind of kept this more towards the center of the tank. Because I wanted to keep an open swim lane all the way around so if fish want to get kind of into a pattern of going around, they have plenty of room to do it and turn. And I expect to keep some bigger tangs and stuff in here. I want to make sure there's plenty of open swimming room but I also want to make sure that I have caves that are big enough to provide some good cover for larger fish. There's going to be a big mix in here though. There's going to be some big stuff and some smaller stuff. So I wanted to kind of accommodate everything that I could. Even the big shelf piece here, that rock structure around it, it's got a huge cave in the back. In a way it's kind of a simplistic rock structure, but at the same time I wanted to have my cool little skylight, which who knows. I'm sure some wrasses and stuff will probably take that little vertical hole there and use it to swim through and maybe even other fish. But to perform the big kind of cave here, I wanted to do kind of a big, something that was big and looked impressive. And I had that 100 pounds of Pukani rock and I really only had five pieces. So I said, I want to do something that really makes it stand out and look good. So I said, I'm going to highlight the front of my cave entrance with it here. Just the beauty of that natural rock, kind of have an overhanging cave. And then have another pillar that's kind of angled a little funny. I didn't want to make it too straight or too flat. I wanted to have a nice clean look to it. You could see the skylight right there. And I didn't want to go all the way through, so I even kind of rearranged some stuff to make sure that you couldn't just see through the whole structure. So inevitably with this rock structure here, there's definitely some pluses and minuses to it. I apologize for the lighting right now. I know you probably can't see me too well just because of the glow of the tank. I'll try to work on that in some future videos. One of the things I really want to focus on with this tank is keeping that open swimming room, but I also have the wanted to leave the possibility of adding coral into this tank a real good possibility. I didn't want my rock structure to get too tall because of that. All of these three rock structures I really believe I could do some really cool coral stuff with and likely it's all going to be SPS if it goes in here. But could you just imagine if I took this big giant shelf piece here and made it kind of like an acro pad? that was just filled up with some big acros like some bally slimers and just all kinds of different stuff going on here. I think it looked really cool and it has a ton of room to grow and make some massive colonies up. And the same thing on these other rock structures. I wouldn't mind possibly getting some stony corals eventually growing on them and kind of covering it up and making a cool reef effect here. Now I'm sure it's, gonna, it's not going to be for a while. It's definitely going to be in the future. But who knows, I might plant some little seeds in here and get some little frags going and stuff that I know is going to do well that I could propagate easily. I don't care if fish chew at it a bit because there's going to be big angels, puffers, maybe a couple triggers even. And I want to make sure, you know, the fish are the priority in this tank, coral secondary, but I wanted to leave myself the opportunity to put that stuff in. I mean, heck, 
who knows, maybe a big Magnifica anemone would look really cool on this middle shelf or even on one on top of one of these rock structures with some bigger clowns in it that are gonna be a little bit more aggressive in defending it so that nothing picks at it. But we'll see what happens. One more thing though I did want to mention on the aquascaping of this tank. I did lay all of this out on the floor and I had to transfer it here. One of the drawbacks of this large tank is that it's not possible for me to take the rock, cement it together, and then place it in this tank. I'm talking about all these rocks, probably at least one, every one of these sections. One, they're huge. Two, they all weigh in excess of 100 pounds. And it's just not practical to try and move them. So I actually had to put them all up there and then take measurements of where each of the base rocks was. And with the measurement of each one of those base rocks, I had to basically kind of layer, take it off layer by layer, set it on the floor, lay it out in a pattern. I started with this structure here. I measured where all the base rocks were from their point, you know, their furthest edge close to the front glass, the side or the back. I actually drew it all out on some graph paper here I'll show everybody. I know it does not look pretty, my handwriting's terrible. If you're trying to do a big aquascape and you lay things out on the floor and you're having difficulties trying to place them in the tank or you have to be very precise, take the time and just do a rough sketch, write down some measurements of where those rocks go. And I'll, I'll admit, this process was difficult. Uh, this rock structure here, I got it done, came out of the tank, and by the way, I'll, I put cardboard and also a sheet of plywood in the front of the glass so that there was no risk of something falling. I was very deftly terrified that while doing that, these tall rock structures could collapse if I misbalanced something before they were cemented and have it slam into the glass and cause scratching. I mean, I know it's not gonna break it. There's just not enough force with a rock tumbling to crack three quarter inch glass, I hope. When I got out, I got everything in the tank and I sat down and I got to see it eye level. There was a couple of little things that I had in the original scape that needed an adjustment to get them to look that way or I decided I didn't really like. One of the things was some of these big caves here, I didn't want it to just see the bottom passing through each cave. I wanted to get some, you know, texture to those openings. So like this arch kind of in the back. I had that set up and actually put a couple of rocks in front of it, the, one of the big caves in the back. I put a rock down on the bottom so that it's also kind of covered up a little bit and it kind of just gives, breaks up the hole in the cave with the bottom and seeing the background of the tank. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just an aesthetics thing for me. Also, I mean, the rock did get cemented and it's, it's going to be sitting for a few days because once I finish the rock installation, I had to put my three cross braces in. I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, aquascape video and kind of the in-depth talk on it. And I really want to know from everybody too, do you like this aquascape or do you not like the aquascape? Are there questions you have on the aquascape? I'm really interested to hear from everybody. So feel free to make comments down below or have questions. And even if you got questions in general about the whole 1600 gallon system build, Go ahead and put them down below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. I'm really looking forward to the journey of this aquarium. There's just so many big things have been starting to happen, and I got a ton of cool stuff that's going to be going on in the next several weeks as we start to get this build a little bit further along and get it towards the point of being able to put some livestock in here. And I'm really interested to know if you like today's video, please go ahead, give it a like, lets me know I'm doing a good job with these videos and I'm always happy to see that like count go up and you know even if you dislike it go ahead and dislike the video too and of course if you really want to see more videos on my 1600 gallon system go ahead and hit that subscribe button I update my channel at least once a week with new content I'm gonna go ahead and do one quick little pan here of the tank just so that everybody watching to get a perspective of what they look like with all the lights out in the basement, which is more or less how I plan to do the viewing of this tank once it's all full. I know it's cloudy still, but give you guys a little perspective. Go ahead and take a look.
Hope you guys enjoyed that other little clip here, just kind of showing the tanks off and from a little, couple different angles, the lights off. It's just a preview of things to come with this tank. It can only start looking better over time. So I just want to say again, thank you for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.